Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I'm going to show you a guide about Sauron. So right off the bat, I must say that I have to apologize to all of you because in the past, whenever I checked the title strategist, I always thought that this didn't include 10% increased focus damage. Like for some reason, my eyes missed to read that your commander as well receives plus two of focus damage. So considering that, I have to apologize in regards to, let's say, Gandalf the White. I didn't do him enough justice when I said it could have been better if focus was included. It is included and it is a perfectly fine typing for Gandalf the White. And the same goes for Sauron. Strategist is a great title for him to have. Sauron is doing nothing but focus damage while providing madness procs. Next are the attributes. So as you see, he has lots of focus and this is what he needs. Focus is going to scale with his skills. Sauron has a lot of skills that scale with focus. And those skills deal even more focus damage when they scale. So Sauron is a focus damage bomb. His next highest stat would be his might stat. It is kind of okay, but nothing comparable with his focus stat. And in regards to his speed stat, it may not be the highest stat, but it is still kind of okay. At least he is outspeeding all the glass cannons out there, like big hitters such as Dine. Right now I have these items equipped with my Sauron. It is the Cow of a Smite, Scale Mail with Melee Vigor, Bone Musk with Hysteria, and the Worn Out Smoking Pipe. Now let's jump over to the skills and let me introduce you to builds. And the great thing about Sauron is that he is so versatile that he can counter any commander in the game by just changing his build. That luxury is something that not every commander has, but Sauron has that versatility. So right now you see Sauron in his madness build and this build is just as nice as the focus build. The madness build is revolving around his top respect 0 tree and his respect 3 tree. And you may want to put a few points into his bottom respect 0 tree just to have access to black arts because this is heal nullification. Let me quickly summarize what the Madness build is doing. To the top we have the Deceiver. This is going to put a debuff against the enemy army. And that debuff is going to increase the damage they receive from your units. And the great thing about this is it is scaling with focus. Meaning the more focus you have, the more damage the enemy army is going to receive. This is such a great skill to have. And when maxed out, you also get plus 20 focus. That is amazing. A bit to the right, we have Ring of Terror. This too is such a nice skill because in the first two rounds, you will cast Madness with a 70% probability against the enemy commander as well as all of his units. That is crazy. To the top, we have the skill Enfeeble. And what this skill is doing is it's going to increase the damage the enemy army is receiving by 40% whenever they are affected by madness. And this is kind of nice because in the first two rounds, you are going to cast madness anyway. That is a very high chance to proc. And then they also receive some additional damage because 40% is a lot paired with the deceiver's damage. That is a lot of damage plus. At respect three, he has his title Gothor. And what this skill is doing is it's going to increase the focus damage the enemy army receives by 25% and when you max this out, you also get plus 20 focus on top of it. So you see lots of damage received. This is what Sauron is capable of. He provides it with the Deceiver, he provides it with Enfeeble, he further provides us with Gothor. And after that, what do we have now? We have some active skills that deal damage, like Soul Siphon. Every three rounds it's being activated and it's going to deal damage against two enemy targets. That is going to be 60% focus damage, which scales with focus. So that means you aren't just dealing 60% damage. It's more depending on how much focus you have. And not just only that, you also heal two of your units by 60%. Scaling with focus, so it's not just 60%, it's even more. So Sauron is also a very strong healer. 
Next skill would be Overload. And this skill is great. Why am I saying this? So first of all, it is kind of like an AoE skill. You target three enemy targets. You may give them a buff because they deal 5% increased damage against you. But in return, you get something much better. Because you are going to deal 34% focus damage on each round, scaling also with focus. So it's not just a 34% focus damage tick. It's going to be more depending on your focus stat. Imagine it being like a dot, like a damage over time effect on three targets on every round. On top of that, it has the effect pursuit, so you can't evade it. If you have any leftover points at this point, I would recommend going over to his uh, Lot of Gifts title, just as I explained in this video, and then jump over to Black Arts put at least one point into it to have the heal nullification effect. It's going to be important in PvP anyway. And there you go, this is Sauron's madness build. Let me also cover the focus build for Sauron. And I won't be saying that this build is superior to the madness build because they both are equally nice. They cover different situations. Sauron's focus damage build revolves mainly around his bottom respect 0 tree and his respect 3 tree. Now I have already described what his respect 3 tree is doing, so you are already familiar with that. But let me also quickly summarize what his bottom respect 0 title lot of gifts is doing. So base stats from your equipment is going to be increased by 30%. That is kind of self-explanatory what this does. That means you will have even more focus. And what will that do? It's going to push the damage and healing of Soul Siphon going to push the damage over time effect of overload you have black arts kicking in every three rounds as well it's going to deal focus damage like almost around 160 percent focus damage against two targets and it also skates with focus while nullifying any healing effect this is such a great skill and then you have trembling strike this is proccing every two rounds so more procs of this more reliable damage against two enemy targets it's going to deal almost 100 percent focus damage and it also skates with focus so this is why sauron is so strong Almost all of his skills are scaling with a stat of his, mainly being his focus stat. When you are playing Sauron in his madness build, his strength of course is that he provides army madness as well as commander madness because of Ring of Terror. 70% chance of procking in the first two rounds and we all know how this game is revolving around early round damage. The sooner you can push out damage, the more likely you are to win. And this is just great for the first two rounds. His second strength is that he is boosting the damage of your units. Well, he's not really boosting their damage, but he is increasing the damage the enemy army is receiving by providing this debuff, the Deceiver, and also Enfeeble. His third strength would be that Sauron himself is providing a lot of damage. Like, look at these active skills. Soul Scythe, Overload. Trembling Strike, Black Arts, four skills that provide a lot of damage. His fourth strength would be that he is kind of putting out a decent amount of healing with Soul Siphon. Last but not least, Sauron isn't just providing healing, at the same time, he is also nullifying any incoming healing every three rounds. And this is what makes him so strong. Let's also summarize what weaknesses Sauron has. His first weakness would definitely be that he too is weak against army and commander madness. He's weak against army madness because he is most likely going to run three units in his army. And the more units you have in your army, the more vulnerable you are against madness. And the reason why he is weak against commander madness is because of these skills. He has lots of focus damage dealing skills and he could potentially nuke his own army. His second weakness would be whenever you play Sauron in his madness build, he is weak against mechanics that counter commander and army madness. Like Aegis or Resolve for example are covering army madness immunity. Or let's say you are fighting against uh, Gorbak because you are on a non-RP server. Gorbak has the Respect 5 title Watchman of Kirith Ungol, which is making all of his orcs 
immune to madness for the 10 rounds. That is kind of a hardcore counter against Sauron's madness build. The third weakness would be whenever you play Sauron in his focus damage dealing build, he is weak against elemental damage mitigation. Like High Alert is reducing elemental damage received by 50%. That is a lot. Or let's say you have the Quilted Armor with focus protection as a special effect. Now that's going to decrease the focus damage the enemy army receives by 60%. That is a lot, even more than High Alert. His next weakness would be Evade. You can't hit your targets if they are evading. The only thing with which you can hit is going to be Overlord because it has Pursuit. But all of your other skills don't have it, so you are kind of weak against Evade. His fifth weakness would be definitely Heal Nullification. Because Soul Siphon is doing a lot of healing, but that can be cancelled with some healing nullification effects. His next weakness would be Elemental Damage, because he has nothing in his skill set that is mitigating elemental damage. Now, imagine you are fighting against the King of the Dead, who is equipping the quilted armor with focus protection. So because he has focus protection, you can't really deal damage with your focus damage dealing build. Now that makes you think it would be a great idea to switch over to the madness build. But that too won't work because army madness only makes sense when you're running more than one unit in your army. Because then whenever a certain unit is if inflicted with madness, they are going to look to the direction of their neighboring units and attack them. But when they don't have any neighboring units, they can't hit their neighbors. Instead, they still are going to hit you. It doesn't matter if you have madness casted against them. Against single army compositions, that doesn't work. So King of the Dead with Oathbreakers, with Kilted Armor and Focus Protection is a good example of Sauron's elemental damage weakness. Of course, there are more units that deal elemental damage like Keepers, or let's say Gandalf the White with his top respect zero tree. That too makes sense. Let's have a look at the items for Sauron. So here we have all purple items and I think this is kind of self-explanatory. Sauron is going to run a three unit evil man army and this is why the carver makes the most sense for him. It has all the stats he needs, focus, might, plus attack for his evil man, followed by smite, like look at this, this is giving you a 35% chance of dealing an additional certain percentage focus damage, which is also scaling with focus, Sauron has lots of focus, so you are going to deal even more damage than this. And then as a chest piece, we do have two options over here, I would mainly recommend running the scale mail as a general, as a more universal pick, because just like the cover, it has all the stats he needs. It's also covering like the fence plus the fence for your melee units. And that, that is great because of the very reason that good side is relying heavily on physical damage. Plus the fence is mitigating physical damage. Followed by melee vigor. Like this is steady damage mitigation for the 10 rounds. And it is counting against all sources of damage, be it elemental or physical. But if you need to counter certain focus damage dealing commanders or units such as Oathbreakers, Keepers, Gandalf the White, Galadriel, then go with the Quilted Armor and Focus Protection since this too has good stats and also the Focus Protection you need to cover those commanders and units. As a headpiece, you definitely want to run the Bone Mask, good stats, having HP is always a good thing for your army, followed by either Hysteria or Relief. Now it really depends on which build you are going to run with your Sauron. If you are running him in his Madness build, go with Hysteria. This is also going to cover every other round Madness procs. Starting with round 1. On round 2 it's going to take a break so there is no Hysteria proc on round 2. But on round 3 it's going to proc again. And remember you have the skill in Feeble. Whenever something is inflicted with Madness you deal 40% more damage against that unit inflicted with Madness. The Bone Mask providing Madness procs every other round is just great value for Enfeeble. But if you are running Sauron in his focus damage dealing builds, then the special effect relief makes a lot of sense too. But I think that build can too work with Hysteria. Relief is just a way of min-max our damage. 
Last but not least, as our accessories, I think the best in slot option is the worn out smoking pipe, like this is more universal, tons of focus, followed by sustain. And this is going to provide lots of feeling, because this is scaling with focus and it activates on every other round, like starting with round one, proccing on round three once more, and so on. Very reliable AoE healing. But if you need to counter certain commanders with strong evading mechanics, such as Gil-Galad, you may want to quickly equip your wizard's fireworks with Hunter's Mark and be done with him. Having a look at Sauron's golden gear, it was kinda hard to decide which weapons are truly best in slot, but we do have a few options over here. In regards to his weapons, I think a generally good approach is the obsidian dagger with the special effect amplification. It has lots of good stats like might, even more with focus and also providing plus 3 attack for undead units. This is kinda nice because Sauron has various troop compositions and among those there is a troop composition with undead units being Oathbreakers or Wraiths and they benefit a lot by this plus 3 attack. On top of it, it has also amplification. For the first 5 rounds, Sauron himself is going to deal 30% increased focus damage. And this is just nuts. This is crazy. Lots of damage for you and your army. But there is also another weapon which is kinda nice. The Smith's Gift. If we have a look at the focus stats, we see that this is even more than the Obsidian Dagger. Meaning you are going to boost your focus damage. But is this good enough to keep up with Amplification's effect? In regards to focus damage, like sheer bursty focus damage, I think not. I think the Obsidian Dagger is the winner in that regard. But this has also plus 6 army HP, which is kinda great. And it also has a kinda unique special effect called Great Deception. Now when you max this effect, out, it's going to do the following. First two rounds against enemy commander on each round, might and focus stat plus three. For the first two rounds, you are buffing the enemy commander, all right, but in return, you get something much greater. Once you reach round three, the enemy commander is going to have his might, focus, and speed stat decrease by minus 30. And this is stacking on each round. Let's say you have reached round 3, minus 30 stats for the enemy commander. You have reached round 4, again, minus 30 stats for the enemy commander, and so on until the battle is over. This is kinda insane. Now let's have a quick brainstorming. Which commanders are being countered by this effect? I was immediately thinking about commanders with active skills, such as Dine. He is starting to deal damage after he has reached round 3. And guess what? This is being active starting with round 3. So this is going to counter glass cannons such as Dine or Gimli Hardcore. And I think if you want to counter those commanders, the Smith's Gift is even better than the Obsidian Dagger. But if you want to stay kind of universal and deal a good amount of damage against every commander, then the Obsidian Dagger may be the better pick. Keep in mind that this is relying on bursty focus damage, which can be countered with the quilted armor and focus protection. So I think both of these items are kinda nice, it just depends on what you are up against. Having a look at Sauron's armor pieces, we do have a few options over here. As long as your armor provides lots of focus and also somehow plus HP and a nice special effect, you are kinda good to go. But I truly believe that the protection of Numenor is his number one choice. Why am I saying this? Like this armor has so many stats speaking for itself. Lots of focus, lots of plus HP, not just only for your evil man. This is also covering undead units. And remember, I already said in this guide that Sauron has certain undead troop compositions that is kind of brokenly strong. And with this, you give your Oathbreakers or Wraiths plus 6 HP. You will also have two evil man units in your army, which is why resilience of evil man makes sense. It makes even more sense when you run Sauron with three evil man units in your army. So let's assume you have decided to run him with three evil man units, then you may want to also switch back to Eastern Resolve as a special effect to counter certain elemental damage dealing mechanics. Like look at this, for the first five rounds, 
all of your evil man units will receive minus 60% less damage, be it burn, poison, or focus damage. Like, this is kind of great, right? Whenever you need to cover Oath Breakers, King of the Dead, or let's say Galadriel, or Gandalf the White with his Respect 10 item, that's going to deal lots of focus damage, you have kind of provided a universal resistance against elemental damage with Eastern Resolve. And what I also like about the protection of Numenor is the special effect spirits awaken. Imagine if you have decided to run them with Oathbreakers. Oathbreakers are vulnerable against elemental damage. They are already very resistant against physical damage because they mitigate 90% of physical damage. But with Spirits Awaken, you finally have a way of mitigating elemental damage. Now, it isn't just mitigating all kinds of elemental damage, it is mitigating focus damage by 50% while increasing the burn and poison damage they receive. But this is kind of okay against Good Side. Good Side is mainly dealing physical damage and sometimes focus damage. And whenever that is the case, you just equip Spirits Awaken and protect your Oathbreakers against Galadriel, Gandalf the White, Keepers, and so on. In case you don't need to fear elemental damage, you can also protect your undead units with Undying Toughness. This is going to give them flat damage mitigation, like minus 9% damage received for them, be it physical or elemental damage for the 10 rounds. Next armor piece would be the Great Plate of the East. Like it is kind of similar to the protection of Numenor but with less focus. And unfortunately it's not giving plus HP for your undead units. So this is kind of a weaker version of protection of Numenor. And as special effects we aren't really versatile like the protection of Numenor armor because here I could only find two special effects that were kind of nice being fortitude of evil man mitigating damage for your evil man just like undying toughness but it is like the evil man version of undying toughness and then it also has hazard training which is going to mitigate the first instances of damage received by 60 percent but only for your melee units so these two are nice to work with but i still think protection of numenor is the winner over here but if for some reason you haven't received the protection of Numenor or Great Plate of the East, you can make do with the Mithril Code. This has also kind of decent focus stats. Not as much as these two chess pieces, but still it is okay. It has at least lots of defensive stat for your army, mitigating physical damage, and also tactical maneuvers, which is going to mitigate damage by 80% for the first three rounds, be it physical or elemental damage. Last but not least, we have the elven cloak as our chess piece and i think this would be my number two chess piece if i can't get a hold of the protection of numenor i think this is even better than great plate of the east and mirfil code because lots of focus also followed by speed and sauron is kind of slow but with this we are counteracting that there's also plus three hp for your army but above all three useful special effects and i think that resistance is the best special effect it has it is covering his elemental damage weakness it's going to reduce the elemental damage by 30 percent if you can't get resistance i think unity would be a second best set the more focus you can have the more damage sauron is going to deal plus 36 focus here in addition plus 30 here that means you will have plus 66 focus and that is even more than the protection of Numenor meaning you are going to deal even more damage when you play him in his focus damage build. In regards to Sauron's helmets we do have a few good options over here like the cask of submerged eye for example is going to cover his madness and stun weakness like this is great value or how about the ancient Numenorean helmet does lots of focus also hp for your evil man and also some defensive stats but above all it has the special effect tranquility this is a great way of removing any debuffs that have been cast on your army let's say you are fighting a Gilgalad or a theoden they tend to have the skill chaotic retreat which is reducing the defensive stat of your army 
but with tranquility you can get rid of that annoying debuff from the get-go this skill is going to be activated on round one meaning that you already have a great value like you remove the debuff as soon as it is cast on you let's continue with the easterling helm even though this helmet doesn't have great stats such as the cask of submerged isle or the Minorian Helm, it does have something that is redeeming it. It's the special effect called Courage, because for the first three rounds, your allied commander is going to deal plus 30% damage. That is kind of crazy if you consider that this is going to add up with the Obsidian Dagger's amplification effect, like plus 30% increased damage for the first three rounds that is a very bursty sauron the question is is this better than the other helmets over here and i simply don't know which of these helmets are best in slot for sauron maybe all of them are great depending on the situation or how about the harad cask it is very versatile it has three special effects being very nice evil man overlord is making your evil man units kind of resistant against stun or madness whenever they are inflicted with these two kinds of cc they receive 50 percent less damage that is a lot of damage being mitigated or how about resolve of evil man whenever you are fighting against commanders that provide lots of army stun with this, you can cover it, like Gandalf the Grey is providing a strong stunning mechanic. And in case you want to roll with flat and steady damage mitigation, you can go with Fortitude of Evil Man. Evil Man units are going to receive 9% less damage, be it elemental or physical. I just don't know which of these helmets are the best. If you have a Krakenish level Sauron with all of these maxed out and maxed refined helmets, let me know in the comment section below what you think is kinda nice to have for Sauron. And don't just say hey it is this helmet in my opinion also explain to me why let's finish the itemization part by having a look at his accessories i think the best in slot choice is definitely the fine smoking pipe i'm saying this because it has the highest focus stat there is and he just can't have enough focus and also it is followed by plus 3 hp but also it has critical care which is a lot of healing if you can't get critical care you can also make do with heroism because then your commander is going to deal increased damage like plus 80 percent for the 10 rounds this will work exceptionally well with his focus damage build speaking of which there is another accessory working very nice with his focus damage dealing build being the box of knowledge it has kind of okay-ish stats but above all all, it has the special effect law of the arcane what this is going to do is when max refined it's giving you a 60 percent chance to trigger two effects one effect is being displayed over here you are going to increase your focus damage by plus nine percent there is another effect covered in this which is unfortunately not listed here but let me quickly summarize it you also have a 60 percent chance to cast a skill that is dealing focus damage which too can scale with focus so the box of knowledge is kind of an underdog and and you can make do with this until you have to find smoking pipe and last but not least let's assume you couldn't get a hold of the uh, fine smoking pipe and box of knowledge then you can still make do with a signet of the barrows it has lots of focus and also some hp and speed for your evil man but above all it has blitz your units and your commander is slow but with this they get an initiative for the first four rounds and there you go these are the items i think make the most sense for sauron now let's have a look into sauron's army composition and oh boy let me tell you he has a lot of ways of getting his army ready for battle he is very versatile in combining his troops let me introduce you four different formulas the first one being the very troop composition you see right now revolving around three evil man units in your army that is the first formula you can run them with these troops over here you see if you don't have a t4 evil man unit like chariots champions or fallen you can just replace them with corsairs you will always have access to corsairs and then just have an equal amount of those three units in your army like it is as easy as that you just click on this button and you are already good to go his second formula is also very easy like you just replace your 
third evil man unit, you definitely want to have halberdiers and dragoons in your army. And then you just include some reapers into your army. They may not be evil men, but they are just great units. They deal lots of damage, have decent stats, and they prioritize enemies with the lowest defense. Guess what? Good side has lots of ranged units. They have low defensive stats, and that's where Reapers come in and get rid of them. His third formula revolves around two evil man units and one undead unit in his army. And it could look something like this. You will have two evil man units in your army, that could be halberdiers and dragoons. And then you just replace your reapers with oathbreakers. And then again, you have an equal amount of those units in your army. But there is also another great troop composition with oathbreakers. Imagine my halberdiers being oathbreakers. Like you see, we have 4k oathbreakers here. And then the rest you fill in with an equal amount of dragoons and chariots. Like this too is very strong. And you can always feel free to replace your T4 evil man unit over here. Like instead of chariots, it could be fallen or it could be champions. Another good troop composition would be like imagine my halberdiers again being oathbreakers. 35% oathbreakers over here. And then imagine my dragoons being vanguards. 30% vanguards. And vanguards are going to protect undead units. That is kind of nice. And then 35% fallen. If you don't have access to fallen, feel free to replace that one spot with any random evil man unit over here. And another great troop composition would be, instead of having oath breakers, like imagine my halberdiers being wraiths, 35% wraiths over here, 30% vanguards over here, they protect our wraiths, and then again 35% fallen or one random evil man unit and this too is very strong and my fourth formula would be just run your sauron with muma kills like you can have a single stack of muma kills imagine my chariots being muma kills right now max it out and run him like this it is on the expansive side but if you do have the economy you can have a little fun with this and guys let me tell you it wasn't me who came up with these various troop compositions like all of these troop compositions are ideas from people within my fellowship like people who have mained sauron for many many seasons they know what they are talking about they have krakenish level gear very good gear played for many seasons with various troop compositions and they know what they're talking about. Shout out to you guys for providing me with these informations. And just to name you a few people such as Onefield aka Godfather of Free to Play Wales, we do love him a lot, or how about Instant, how about Mortal Kombat and Devil Ping Patchwork. You guys rock, you provided all of these information and credit goes to you. I won't take credit for these troop compositions. After having established that, we are ready to continue. And by the way guys, I have listed all of the various troop compositions on my Discord channel. If you want to have a more visually easy to digest way of looking at it, come join me at my Discord channel. Find a link to my Discord channel in the video description below. All right, it's time to have a look at the battle reports. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back and forth between the madness and the focus damage build just to have a comparison and a vague idea which build counters what commander. Like I'm just trying to prove a point here. The point being is you can counter any commander, and this is what I like about Sauron, depending on the build. You just need to switch the build. So here I am playing Sauron in his madness build, as you see. This is the gear with Hysteria, of course, and cover with Smite, Scale May with Melee Vigor, and one not Smoking Pipe with Sustain. So it is the gear at the start of the video. And here you see that my army is already halfway down. So when I took the first hit, I already have had like 50% of my army left. And this is the result. Kind of crazy, right? Let's have a look at Gandalf. He has the cover with Smite. That makes sense. Scale May with Guard. Bone Mask with Hysteria. And Warnot Smoking Pipe with Sustain. This is a great Gandalf. Don't get me wrong. Like this Gandalf has lots of respect. He has Convener. But guess what? 
in the madness build he can convener himself to death and this is what's happening right now and let's also check out the other skills wizard is stunning sauron sauron's army in the first round that makes sense also he is dealing a bit of damage but surge is being picked because of the additional attack whenever he attacks he is also having a chance of procking the gray like healing but guess what sauron can counteract healing every three rounds you get a chance to cancel any healing this is a strong gandal with a full army all right he is level 45 but still we are halfway down now let's compare this with his focus damage build so here you see sauron in his focus damage build it is the same gear i just have switched the special effect of the bone masks to relief even more focus damage and you see this is the focus damage build and then with a full army this is what we achieve but look at this it is a good gandalf he has a mirkwood bow with ranged might he has superior hauberk with fire protection trapper suit with hysteria wizards fireworks with ranged might and of course convener again so this time we can't make convener proc against himself so this time we are dealing focus damage we are relying on our elemental damage but gandalf is mitigating it with high alert minus 50 percent elemental damage received now let's have a look into the snapshot page so with a full army we have done around 175k damage versus 2k damage and we have healed almost 70k of it that is kind of okay like consider the fact he has high alert maxed out so this is okay and here in the detailed view we see sauron has done a big chunk of damage my next comparison is going to be with dwalin right now i have switched back to the madness build as you see again it's going to be hysteria and i am fighting dwalin this is his gear warhammer with concussion durance plate fortitude of dwarves Horseman's Helm with Warding and Wizard's Fireworks. So this Dwalin has nothing to protect him against the Madness procs of Sauron. In the snapshot page we see that we have done around 330k damage versus around 150k damage. And in the detailed view we see that our army has provided a decent amount of damage like in total I think this is maybe 60% of the damage done to the enemy while Sauron has taken care of the 40%. Here I am fighting Sauron in his focus damage dealing build you see it's relief in the focus damage build i have a full army this time it is the same dual in like you already know his gear we have done 310k damage versus almost 170k damage and in the snapshot page we see that <laughs> sauron has kind of done 200k damage like this is true emperor palpatine forced lightning focus damage build let's also see how sauron is doing against theoden here we have him in his madness build. Again, it's Hysteria, a full army, and Theoden has this gear, Cutlass with melee might, Scouts made with deafness, Horseman's Helm with resolve, Warnot Smoking Pipe with sustain, and this is a pretty decent Theoden. High respect level and meta build. This makes a lot of sense. We have done 270k damage versus 260k damage it is kind of a decent amount of damage provided from sauron and his army in his focus damage build with a full army this is the result this is the theoden cutlass with smite scouts made with shroud horseman's helm with resolve and mayra's reins with fine horse all right his build could have been a bit different like i would have uh, put some more points into chaotic retreat and then also like five points into mounted combat and then any leftover points into rohirrim and riding excellence in a snapshot page we see that we have done almost 345k damage versus 190k damage and in the detailed view we see even more focused damage from sauron well, let this be my last enemy commander for comparison like we will compare gil Galad now sauron in his madness build once more with a full army fighting against gil Galad. he has this gear with elven white knife and then elven cloak resistance high elves helmet with resolve of elves 
Silver Harp of Rivendell with Might of Elves. And this too is a meta build, Gilgalad, very strong. And this is the result. We have done around 210k damage versus 230k damage. And this is the detailed view. Keep in mind that Gilgalad is a very strong commander. He has Evade and Sauron can only deal damage with Overlord, which is carrying Pursuit. If you intend to beat Gilgalad, you will need to equip the Wizard's Firework with Hunter's Mark or the Palantir of Orphan with Tactical Mark. And here we are back in his Focus Damage build. It is with Relief, but as you see, our army isn't full this time. We took a small hit before. And this is the outcome. Gilgalad has this gear, Elven White Knife. And then High Elf, Hauberg with Resilience of Elves. Hunter's Guide with Ages. Up of the Florian, Elf Strength. And again, a meta build, Gilgalad. Here we see the snapshot page. We have done almost 180k damage versus 230k damage. This time our troops didn't deal enough damage. But long story short guys, Sauron is a very strong commander. And I think that I may haven't done enough justice to him in my tier list. I need to compare him with Sunind and with Yusra once more. Because after having played him at respect level 5, I have achieved great reports. Like, I'm only running him with purple gear. And I do know that he can counter various commanders. Like, basically he can counter any commander in the game just by changing his build. This versatility is something that not every commander has. And it is this versatility which is making me rethink in regards to Sauron. Maybe he is higher in the tier list. After getting decent golden gear, I have to run all the fights once more. Like I have to do the same with Sunind and also with Yusra. It is kinda hard to get those recommended golden items. But once that is done, we have to compare those reports and see who is sitting truly on top of the food chain. Long story short, Sauron is very strong. He has lots of skills that scale with focus while providing strong madness mechanics, while providing lots of healing and nullifying enemy healing. And let's not forget how versatile Sauron is with his troop composition. That too is something not every commander is capable of. And this is Sauron in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this guide. And speaking of which, I do have more guides on my YouTube channel. Just check out my playlist with various different commander guides. And it's also a nice way of supporting my channel for free. Just by watching the videos, you are telling the algorithm, hey, this guy has some cool content. Please continue forwarding his content to me. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.